Ghost Child in a Lighthouse Held My Wife's Hand. I live in a small town on Lake Superior. I've known of several supposedly haunted lighthouses around the area, but I'm unaware of any activity in the lighthouse in the city that I live in. So I was pleasantly surprised when I heard that they were offering paranormal tours of the lighthouse. I really didn't expect much to happen, but I decided that it might be fun for my wife and I to go. The first time we went was a pretty wild ride. That story is for another time, but our crew got several intelligent responses via EVP recordings. But the second time was pretty neat. Long story short, it's believed that the spirit of a child resides at the lighthouse. There was a group of six of us, and we were all in the basement. One of the investigators leading the tour was trying to contact the child's spirit. A fellow tour goer had eagerly volunteered to lug around the SLS camera for the past hour and a half. I tried to carry around the box where spirits could pick out words, but right when I grabbed it, it said wrong that was a huge nope for me. The tour was coming to a close without him noticing anything on the camera at all. I was standing across the room from the man with the SLS camera when I noticed that the hair on my arms was standing on end and my skin was tingling. I went to say something to my wife, but before I could, she grabbed me, told me her opposite hand had gone ice cold. Seconds after, the guy across the room with SLS camera called me to come over. Walked over to find out that there was a small stick figure that appeared to be holding my wife's hand. The hand that she had said was freezing. It wasn't like a flash. Then it was kind of gone. Stayed for several minutes. My wife would move over and it would show up again. My old house was definitely haunted. Story number one. I remember sitting on my bed, either watching Netflix or playing something on my PS4. Can't remember exactly. But I heard outside my window was cow noises. Well, I can actually relate to that. Like really close to my window. I was getting freaked out and I texted my cousin about it. She asked if there was a cow near my home. I told her, yeah, but not that close where I can hear them. She just told me that maybe one of them got out. But it also didn't really sound like a cow, if that makes any sense. It sounded like a woman in stress as well, mixed in with a cow. I don't know, it just kind of freaked me out and my room is a whole story itself. My three ex-uncle literally died in my room. And the bed frame he died on was given to me for a while. But I kind of ended up giving it to my sister. And speaking of my room, it was the hottest room in the whole house. On certain days you could open windows and still somewhat be hot. I don't know if that accounts to anything paranormal. I know something being cold does, I think. Just thought I should mention it. Speaking of my sister, here's story number two. I remember being in my sister's room, scrolling through musically. Hmm. When suddenly in the corner of my eye, I see something in the doorway. It wasn't just standing there, it was crawling on the floor. It looked like a woman. She had grayish skin, long black hair, and she was bent over like spider style, if that makes any sense. She was wearing a long white dress. As soon as I seen that, I literally started crying. I jumped up out of bed and slammed the door shut. I jumped back on the bed and hid underneath the covers. Story number three. 
I remember being in the kitchen with my sister. We were jumping around, acting like idiots, when suddenly we both heard something outside the window. It sounded like a chainsaw going off. I peeked out. Nobody was there. But it was close to the window. Like, really close. Me and my sister just ran toward my room and locked the door. Story number four I was in my room, sitting down on my bed, about to go to sleep. I opened my eyes a little bit and seen something in the corner of my room. It was a man in a hat. I immediately turned on my little lamp beside my bed. When I turned on that light, it wasn't there anymore. I was so freaked out I didn't go to sleep, though. I just recently looked up man in a hat paranormal. Turns out it has something related to childhood trauma. Explains a lot. Story number five. Every single time I'd go into my kitchen and get something from the fridge, I would feel like I'm being watched. I always felt that in my house, but whenever I get something to eat or drink, it would feel stronger. I don't know how to explain it, but it just felt off. Speaking of that, I remember getting something to drink and it was on the top shelf and the way that my fridge was made, I could kind of climb up to it. There was a little room to kind of put my feet on and as soon as I was about to get it, I felt something touch my shoulder and thought it was my dad or mom, but whenever I looked, nobody would be there. I just climbed down and ran to the living room. Paranormal experience or crazy coincidence? This experience happened about four or five years ago. I was 18 or 19 at the time. I've always wondered about it. I was on vacation with my family, brother, cousins, aunts, uncles, etc. We're standing in a beach cottage for a week. My brother, cousin, and I all slept in the same room. As the youngest family member, I picked the short straw, slept on the cot while my brother and cousin slept in the two beds that a room provided. One night I was sleeping in my cot when all of a sudden I felt this hand on my chest start to pull me off my cot onto the floor. It scared the shit out of me. For whatever reason, when I woke up, I called to my cousin, who, to my surprise, was already awake. When I told him what had happened to me, he said that seconds before I called to him, he had a dream of a dark figure crawling on the ceiling and staring down on me. After he woke up from this, he says that no more than 30 seconds go by before I called to him. And this completely freaked us out, and we ended up sleeping downstairs on the couch. Normally, I would chalk this up to sleep paralysis, but the fact that my cousin and I both had related experiences makes me question if this was paranormal in nature. We've also experienced lights moving around the room in years prior, but I always thought it was some illusion of the window shades or something that maybe has just freaked us out before, too. What did I see? In the summer of 2016, I attended a graduation party in my hometown. At around 10 p.m., I decided eh, to say my goodbyes and head down the mountain by myself. As I reached the summit of the mountain, my headlights illuminate a horrific scene to my right. A wrecked red sedan with the front window shattered and a man laying in front of the car. I steered quickly out of the way, since my head was nearly on the white line of my lane. A few feet away from the scene, I pulled off into the truck lane, put my hazards on, and stared in shock in my rearview mirror. A few seconds later, I see car lights coming my way. Slowing down at the scene, I try to wave them down. But it's dark and secluded, and I'm in shock. It was unsuccessful. 
They slow down, look at the scene, and hit the gas full speed down the mountain. After they passed me, my anxiety kicked in and I too fled the scene at full speed. I called my boyfriend at the time and didn't tell him what I saw. I needed to distract myself. About eight minutes later, when I arrive home, I wake up my parents and waste no time getting everyone into the car to drive me up to the summit. In the meantime, we call the police. I didn't do this earlier because I was fresh out of high school and I didn't know if I would have to stay at the scene. If I would be questioned, maybe, and in trouble for being out so late and so young, I just panicked. By the time my parents and I make it back to the summit, there's nothing there. I was less than 20 minutes. I got out in shock, looked for broken glass from the windshield and any other signs that somebody had been hurt there. Nothing. Now I'm freaking out because I look as if I'm hallucinating all of this. My parents called the police again and we left the emergency services as they were arriving. Talked to a few people from my hometown and they told me that they wouldn't be surprised if I saw something paranormal because of all of the accidents that have happened there. I personally know a few people who have died driving on that road. The only other explanation I can think of was that it was like an elaborate staged accident to lure someone out of their car. But the windshield was broken. His head was by the white line. If he wasn't dead already, he was placing himself in serious danger. The airbags were depleted, and the car was smashed by a telephone pole. How could someone stage that and be gone less than 20 minutes? Even if the wreck did just happen, how would that man have been able to walk away from the scene and not leave his car or other evidence behind? The Haunted Toys R Us So I grew up in Sunnyvale, California in the early 2000s. I loved going to our city's Toys R Us as a kid. However, there were always rumors about it being haunted. I remember some kids at my elementary school telling stories about how boxes would inexplicably be pushed off shelves by a ghost in the store. I always thought it was just kids telling stories to try to scare each other, and I never really thought much of it. Just considered it as an urban legend since nothing paranormal had ever happened to me in that store. But when I was about 13 years old, I had a strange experience in that Toys R Us that made me change my mind about the whole legend behind a hoax. On the day in question, my family was going to Toys R Us because my little brother wanted to buy something. My best friend and I decided to go too because we'd been to that store in years, really. While we were waiting for my little brother to find the toy he wanted, my friend and I were exploring through all the aisles in the store, messing around and having fun with toys. Finally, we reached the back of the store. And by this time, we were bored and looking at toys, so we just stood in an aisle and talked. Eventually, the topic of the store being haunted was brought up. And while we were talking about it, a box suddenly flew off the shelf behind my friend, almost hitting her on the back of the head. This was pretty freaky, especially since we had just been talking about the supposed Toys R Us haunting. We weren't too scared at this point, though since this could easily be explained by the box not being placed on the shelf very well and falling off due to gravity. Although, I did remember seeing the box before it fell off the shelf, and I remembered it looking like it was pretty stable. But we just brushed this off and continued talking. However, a few moments later, the lights that were hanging from the ceiling above us began violently shaking back and forth. My friend and I stared at the ceiling, frozen in shock. After a few seconds, the light stopped shaking and we both stared at each other like, what just happened? I started to feel more uneasy, but the incident with the lights could also be explained by something normal. The area where we were had a second floor above it, which I think was a staff area. 
So I tried to tell myself that someone must have been doing something on the floor above us that caused the lights to shake by accident. In any case, my friend and I moved to the next aisle over just in case the lights might fall on us. The aisle we were in now had a lot of stuffed animal toys in it. Both of us were just standing there talking about things that had just happened to us when a toy monkey on a shelf next to us began moving all on its own and making a creepy laughing sound. We both stared at it in disbelief. Then we stared at each other and started screaming. We sprinted out of the store as fast as we could. Once we got outside, we couldn't just leave because we had to wait for my brother to finish buying his toy. We waited in the parking lot, tried to rationalize what had just happened. We talked about it and decided that the monkey toy could have been one of those motion-activated toys. So we must have set the toy's motion sensor off somehow, but we didn't know this for sure. So my friend and I somehow worked up the courage to go back into the store and inspect the monkey toy to see if it was really motion-activated. We carefully studied the toy and read its package, but there was nothing that mentioned it was motion-activated. The only way you could make the monkey move and talk was if you pressed a button on its body. There was no way we could have pressed the button by accident, and when we realized it truly went off all by itself, we started screaming all over again and ran out of the store for the last time. A desperate and very hard to believe plea. Obvious throwaway account. I'd like to preface this by saying while I sincerely respect everybody's opinion and to give me advice in any form is appreciated. If you're unwilling to suspend your disbelief and would rather suggest I have a mental illness and to seek help, thank you. But I don't need your comment. I personally sought out being hospitalized and evaluated and was told I didn't have one. I did immediately take that path to address this when it first began. I can infrequently and at random hear very short snippets of other people's thoughts. Yes, I do not have a mental illness. This has been going on for about two, two and a half, three years, and at first, for quite a while, I ignored it. Like I was in denial and doused myself in skepticism. I was worried for my brain. At this time, as it passed and it continued, gave up on that. I had and will always have that little skeptic that's telling me it's not real, by the way. What I hear are one-word thoughts or very short sentences, completely at random, very sporadically coming from people in my vicinity. It's not a crazy, wild, powerful superpower. It's never going to be helpful to swindle millions or win big. It's literally just completely random, useless, mundane shit. I probably hear like a foreign thought once or two or two maybe less times a week, it's so unpredictably random and infrequent that to study it or experiment or try to solidly prove it, it would be kind of like catching lightning in a bottle. Why I'm here and what I'm asking for. I did my best to Google forums and websites, scour through Facebook groups, and have never heard of another person experiencing this. So I thought I should come to Reddit and speak openly about it, safely from a throwaway, in the hopes that somewhere, commenter's friend or friend of a great aunt or of a nephew, somebody has this issue, anyone. There's obviously many, many stories and legends about this kind of thing. It has to have been going on for centuries, maybe since the birth of man. It's too prevalent a paranormal subject for there to be no basis for it. There's no fucking way I'm the only person on earth that can do this. Slightly confused as the narrator if you said you couldn't find anything on it and then talk about how it's renowned.
House is haunted, or I'm going insane. This started about a week ago. For some background, I live in a 1920s home. I live with two other people who are currently out of town, and if it's relevant, the house flooded a couple of weeks ago. There's black mold, but very sparse. Also, the back door doesn't lock, so it could be someone coming in also. There's a kind of an attic which I don't have access to, which is also supposedly flooded after the maintenance man came to have a look after the flooding of the house. A few weird things have been happening. For example, today I wake up in the morning to go to the bathroom. Keep in mind, again, my roommates are out of town. I find a pot plant on the top shelf that's been knocked over. Keep in mind that I do own a kitten, but she can't even push down a 250 gram container. She's only five weeks old and can't jump on the bed without help. The toilet seat is also up, which as a female, I would never ever do that. I work from home most days. Go into the kitchen for a drink and the microwave door is wide open and not closed. I don't use the microwave at all. A few other things that have been happening as well. I'm quite particular about how I position my soaps in the shower. I've been noticing for the past week, but they haven't been in the spot I left them in. Thought I was going insane, so I started taking photos before and after my shower to confirm where I've left them. They're definitely moving. Not to mention that there's a brown boot mark on the whole tile when again, I don't leave the house nor my that size shoe. I've checked with all my shoes, none of them match. I like to order Subway, bit of a Subway fiend. I order a foot long, but kinda half it to eat later. Popped that in the fridge, never got around to eating it, and as I had kind of had a few work events that I had to attend in person, which is very rare, the subway I noticed is also gone today. No one's been home, so I'm confused who ate it. Also, to even make me sound even crazier, ran out of makeup remover, and the other day I go to reach for a cleanser. I don't really like it. So I got it kind of as a free gift from a pharmacy, and I noticed that it's literally been duplicated. I now own two of these very specific cleansers that looked exactly the same. I never went out of my way to purchase this product, considering that I don't even like it. Why would I buy it again? I don't even use cleanser on a regular, but usually just... Oh no, I don't know what this word means. My cellar water? McKellar water, micellar water. One of those. Help. <laughs> An old memory from a weird experience as a child. When I was a 12-year-old child, I had this weird experience that I could never properly explain. It was a summer night. I live in a tropical country. So it was a particularly hot day. Played the entire day inside, as a kid should, and then at night went to sleep. All lights were out and the air conditioning was on in full potency. An old and loud machine, probably as old as me. I was looking at the dark ceiling, kind of waiting for the need to sleep to come, and at that moment I noticed something. There was a spot, a dark spot on the ceiling that was even darker than the rest of the room, and to my surprise, it started to move. Went to the walls, then the floor, then walls again, just as my eyes kept following it, then it stopped and accelerated again, directly to the ceiling portion right above me. I was paralyzed probably because the usual fear that a kid would feel. And there I stayed for a few moments. I cannot say for certain if it was a few seconds or minutes that had passed, but definitely felt like a long time. My eyes fixed on the dark spot. I felt that it fixed without eyes towards me. Hmm. 
Suddenly it jumped, not to the walls of the floor, but to me. And for a brief moment I could see the shape of a mouth, an emotion as if to bite my face. That exact moment, the loud air conditioning turned off. I screamed, waited in panic for my parents to come to the rescue. I was on the same bed, too shaken to move. My parents entered my room to see if everything was okay, and, well, I was okay, but scared, but okay. I was more calm after I talked to them. Apparently, the electric power of the entire house went off. Nothing else happened. I even actually slept at some point after that. My first paranormal experience. Back when I was a small child, I lived in this two-story home in a small town in California. It was up these hills in the orange groves. The way the house was set up is that there's a kitchen and a living room on the bottom floor, and there were stairs on the back wall that led up to one huge bedroom with the bathroom. The room was shaped kind of like an L, so I had my own bed next to the bathroom door, and my parents were on the other side. One night I had my cousin over for a sleepover. It was pretty dark in the room, and the bathroom light was on, and just a little cracked open giving us some light. My parents were asleep, and my cousin and I were laying in bed talking when all of a sudden we saw this completely black shadow figure walking by the bathroom door. I vividly remember what it looked like. He looked to be a man, and he was really hunched over and for some reason had his hands out in front of him. He had these long fingers pointing down. My cousin and I both grabbed the covers and hid as long as we could. We whispered to each other that we thought something had broken in. We were terrified, didn't know what to do. We listened under the covers for a while, and it was nothing but dead silence. We hid until we managed to fall asleep. By the morning, we had woken up, told my parents everything, and somebody had broken in. Of course, my mom didn't believe us and said we were imagining it all. My dad, on the other hand, I'm not sure what he was thinking because he had multiple paranormal experiences in this home and that we later found out about because he didn't want to scare us at that time living there, but that's a whole other story, though. Fast forward a few years later, we moved to another home the next town over. Here I had my own bedroom. I was scared of the dark, so my mom would always leave the hallway light on for me with the door wide open, and it would light up the whole wall where my closet is. One night while laying in bed... Once again, I saw the same exact shadow figure I had seen. This time, he was in the light. My heart stopped. He was this black fog that I can completely see through. Couldn't make out any face shape or features, and he was once again hunched over with his hands out in front of him. Long fingers just walking slow and casually. I was terrified, and I cried myself to sleep that night underneath my covers. This was the last time I had seen him. Possible ghost or clown sighting. That's a new one. Get ready for clowns. So a couple of years ago I lived in another city, and this particular period I was actually staying at a friend's dorm room. My friend's girlfriend had a dog, and one night she asked me if I could walk it. So I did. It was the perfect possibility for me, considering I had pre-rolled and, well, really wanted to smoke, but I didn't want to upset the dorm neighbors. This dorm is located near a lot of factories and a few houses. It's basically surrounded by big fenced factory and industrial buildings. So I was walking and smoking. I went down the side road not too far away from the dorm. But then I went back to the main road given the whole vibe was just creepy. There really wasn't anybody around, but I was a little paranoid maybe. 
When I came back to the main road, suddenly I feel like somebody's behind me, but not right behind me. However, I did feel a presence, so I turned around to look. Upon looking right away, I see somebody at the corner I'd just passed when coming back down the main road. Look away again because I don't want to be rude and stare. However, this is also when I think about what I saw. Something was just off. I could only see the silhouette of a person, given that it was dark and it was right underneath the big road light. When I reviewed inside my head about what I just saw, it appeared this person was hovering with their arms slanted. And the silhouette of their hair looked like an afro. It was giant. So I look back. This is maybe five seconds since I turned around and the person is gone. So I almost shit myself, given that I was high. <laughs> I called my friends and told them that I saw a ghost. They didn't really believe me and told me that maybe somebody was trying to freak me out. The thing is, I used to go to rehab and I met a lot of great but troubled people at that rehab. I once met a guy who was only there for a few weeks, but I was connected with him so much. He was a very passionate dude with a lot of love for life and spirituality, but he was a shattered person and sadly he hung himself. He hung himself at his home. This would be about 100 meters from where I saw this person, but my friend never had an afro. So I really thought about that. Maybe his head was just disfigured. I obviously started googling all sorts of stuff about this particular area. Then I found another scary thing. There had been only two clown sightings ever in the city I live in. And one was a couple of years ago in a parking lot maybe one kilometer from where I saw this person. So yeah, either way, ghost or clown, I'll never forget that day. I personally have shifted in believing that it was somebody pretending to be a clown and scaring me. This is just really scary to me given that I was all alone where I was at and, well, the way they were standing really did look like they were floating. I don't know you guys, I just really wanted to share this because it's a little creepy and my actual question to y'all regarding this story is whether or not y'all think it's just a clown or maybe it's actually my friend. Could there be another explanation for the afro? Could it maybe be a disfigured head? I'm not an expert in all, but I'm going to try to rule out the fact that my friend showed himself to me. I'm wondering what clowns have to do with the paranormal. If anybody listening right now has any additional connection between clowns and the paranormal, please enlighten me, because that's a first. Has any of you seen a black shadow figure that looks like a man? Ever since I can remember, I've been having nightmares with a black shadow man, who whenever they come closer to me in those nightmares says to me, You're mine. You can't escape. I'll always find you. I'll get you. You'll see. You'll never escape. I'm always here. Things along those lines. I was like 14 to 19 back then. It's gotten to the point where I kind of learned how to wake myself up whenever I'm having nightmares. I see this black shadow figure that could be or not be that shadow man. I start screaming inside my nightmare, wake up, get up, wake up, please wake up. And then people who's been in the bed with me and stuff, and they tell me that I start murmuring until I end up screaming. I wake up as if I've been running a marathon and with bradycardia. <laughs> Fast heart palpitations. And it takes me around five to ten minutes to calm down and understand the fact that I'm not in my head anymore, but in real life. Last time I dreamed with it, I was in total darkness. Felt like I fell onto a bed and to my right there was a window. 
A strange silhouette with a strange figure and I stupidly become curious of what it was. I came closer to the window, and when I realized it, the face of it was right in front of me. It seemed human, but with black irises, no hair, the skin was black, pitch black like space black. But it was so black it seemed like it was a void, like it had no skin at all. But you could still see a bit of texture. Then he asked her, more like motioned me to follow him through a door. Which I effing didn't, because in that precise moment my girlfriend woke me up because I was talking, saying, Wake up now, wake up now, right this moment. Couldn't breathe and my heart was beating so fast my whole chest hurt for so long. Two ex-boyfriends had encounters with the black mass in our room that was near me. X. A talked yo in his sleep, and according to XA, the thing told him it wanted to talk to me and be with me, to which he responded, no. We're Christians, so he reprimanded and vanished into the name of Jesus and demanded it to leave. After a couple of hours, XA fell asleep on the couch, sleepily got up and said things like, who are you? What do you want? Why her? No, she will not. I asked you to leave. You will not talk to her. Stop now and go. What's your name? Apparently the thing said its name and he just replied, Oh. Then he snapped out of it and didn't remember at all what he said or what happened. I did because I was in the kitchen making dinner, petrified. I didn't move, not even a millimeter, because I was so afraid. I didn't want to see anything. Then while eating, he randomly said, Do you know anybody named... Name thing. Said? And I said, No, I don't. And I was 20 years old back then. Then at 21, ex-boyfriend and I were sleeping in his house. It was something around 2.30 a.m. to 3 a.m., and he got up to, like, you know have sex, and when he, okay, when he came onto me, I saw a face that made me push away and scream, went under the blanket, scared as fuck, and I heard him say, what the fuck, who are you, what do you want, how did you enter this place, dudes, when I tell you my soul left my body, I'm not joking at all, XB came to the bed next to me, and he started looking at me like he wanted to kill me. I thought that it possessed him, for fuck's sake. Then he looks behind me and says, I want you out now. I felt a sudden urge to leave, to run and go home with my mom. I felt unprotected and terribly vulnerable. I was only wearing a pair of panties, and I ran to the door of his house and stayed there in sudden realization I was naked, basically. XB came after me with a shirt and my bra and said, We're getting out of here, okay? Let's get in the car and let's head to your house or just drive around. We walked back to his room and my body didn't enter. Couldn't move past the door. I heard a voice in my head that said, Do not enter. You cannot enter. And XB noticed and looked inside the room and saw that black mass figure on my side of the bed and he said, Fuck it. Use my shorts. Let's get going. We were half naked driving around the city until it was 7 a.m. and the sun was visible. We came back to his house and it felt different. Light even, and we slept and that was it. Never saw it again. Fast forward to 27, present time. I moved out of my country and in the past three years I've never seen it again. Never heard anybody said anything that they've seen it or felt it when it was around me. But very rarely I have nightmares with it just standing there. Far from me, just there. It hasn't said anything of the sort like he used to say when I was a teenager. My long-term boyfriend's woken up once or twice a month saying I'm murmuring. He knows he has to wake me up when he sort of hears me, and it's a rule I've imposed to everybody who ever sleeps with me. Now, my younger 26 brother has been having nightmares with a black shadow man chasing him down. 
He's woken my mom up several times at night screaming. Some sort of presence I had years ago. It happened six years ago, and I still think about it to this day, that something was bothering me at this house. The story was that I'd sometimes sleep over at my wife's house, lose my girlfriend at the time. She was with her family, and they had recently moved in, like one or two years. The first occurrence was when I was sleeping in the living room. They were just done watching movies. She would go sleep upstairs in her room, and I would be sleeping in the living room. It was probably late around midnight, and as I was laying down with my eyes closed, I felt some sort of presence at a distance behind me. It felt like somebody was there walking around, and I thought, well, it's probably her. And shortly after, she, in quotes, called out my name. I began to turn around and about to answer her call out, and to my surprise, there was absolutely nobody. It gave me quite the goosebump that I immediately texted her about it. And so she told me her little brother, you know, to accompany her downstairs and sleep on the other sofa. We did talk about whether the rest of her family felt some sort of presence, and at the time, nothing happened, so, well, so far so good. It was just me. The second time around, when I slept over, her parents were on a business trip. I got to sleep in her room. We were cuddling to sleep, and she was fast asleep, basically. I was still trying to as I kind of have a hard time sleeping. I think I'm sensitive and sensing what's about to happen, if you know what I mean. Not sure if that's a thing, but anyway. That night I felt some pre-sense again in the room. Presence. <laughs> kind of similar at a living room, but a bit more intense. This time my heart was pounding and I began to feel two sets of hands at the bottom of the blanket slowly climbing up on its way to me. The feeling truly intensified. I feel some sort of face or rather the head of this thing against me. This presence was so close then it did something. It was probably trying to shout or something and I don't know but it felt like it opened its mouth to suck the life out of me or my energy. I wasn't sure but when it did that my body went paralyzed. I guess you can say it's the night terror, and I can't speak, but the only thing I could do was to breathe as fast and loud as I can to wake my girlfriend up so that way she could move or nudge my body in order for me to regain back control. I was wondering till now what exactly were I dealing with. I felt like this thing targets only just me. Just a bit of a backstory with the paranormal experiences, or God knows what, this sort of sensing, in quotes, what's about to happen, kind of started when I was a kid. Sleeping in my parents' bedroom in the same thing at night. Not exactly the same thing that happened, but everybody was sleeping at the time. I swear I heard the door opened, and something went in. From what I remembered, it was probably roaming inside the room, so as curious as a kid would get... I decided to turn around and open my eyes and check it out. I saw a shadowy figure. It was dark, so I couldn't make out the shape of it, but when it noticed that I saw its presence, this thing waved or did something to me. Immediately, I was paralyzed. I wasn't even asleep, and since then, I started to experience frequent sleep paralysis. Even if I just closed my eyes for just a little while, Classical music in basically empty bunker. So I work in a large bunker complex from World War II. I stayed for the night shift the other day. I'm an editor, so I had headphones on most of the time. Every now and then, though, I thought I heard some music from somewhere, but well, I brushed it off as me just being tired. At around 1 a.m., I went for a smoke in the area that basically only me and my bosses can access. 
It's an old stairwell used to transport heavy cargo that doesn't fit in any elevator. As I approached the door, I once again heard music, but this time clear as day. As I opened the door, it got really, really loud, like as if somebody was sitting with a violin at the bottom of a stairwell. I work on the fourth floor. No other floor has direct access to the stairwell except the very bottom. Needless to say, I was weirded out, but thought, huh, maybe some composer uses their free time and practices here. Yeah, I know that kind of is a stupid assumption, but the only explanation I had in the moment. The semi-social person I am, I went down to see who was playing and say hello, since the music was actually kind of beautiful. It reminded me a bit of the classical Bioshock music and was, as far as I can tell, played by one single person on one violin. However, after I stepped down like four or five steps, the music abruptly stopped. Not in the way that you stop a recording, like I could actually hear clattering and kind of sounds from handling a stringed instrument. I went down all the way and looked for any open doors or some way for this person to have gotten in here. However, there was nothing, no one in sight that would suggest someone just played music there. So, kind of disappointed, I just went all the way back up. Bunker's floors are about double a normal height, so I had to walk up around six floors, but it... Well, just as I stepped back into our hallway, the music started again. So I went back down again. Surely enough, there was no one there. At that point, my confusion turned into being kind of creeped out. I double-checked if every door was locked, which they were, and if the elevator, which had been out of service for a while, worked again, but maybe that's how they got there, but no, it was still stuck below ground floor as it had for almost a year. So I thought, okay, every door is locked, and the only way in here is to have a key through one of the doors on each floor. Five floors total. So I went back up and waited, since I was sure to hear somebody unlock a door and step into the stairwell. Nope. I reached the top, and at eerily that precise moment I heard weird violin sounds first, like someone mildly plucking the strings. Then the music set in again, and it was loud, like really loud. So I went down again, only to find nothing again, and at that point I was actually wondering if I was just too exhausted and starting to hallucinate or something. That's how I explained the music to me for the rest of the night. It was only the next morning that my stupid brain realized that, well, I recorded the music the first time I heard it loudly. So there's no chance of this just being in my head. Premonition before my mother passed. My mother was very sick for several years before she passed. She contracted mononucleosis at 50. And when this is contracted as an adult, it can cause a complication of organ failure. She needed a liver transplant, was also having issues with low kidney function due to the illness. She had been in the hospital the entire month before she passed. She seemed like she was getting better, well, enough to survive a transplant. She was transferred to the hospital to get her ready for the transplant, but contracted COVID and took a turn for the worst. Now for the premonition part. She had been transferred to a hospital that was like a two and a half hour drive, so I could no longer visit her every day like I had been. I was planning on visiting her the following Saturday, but on a Wednesday before, I just had a feeling that I had to take the next day off to go see her because, oh, well, she might not make it until Saturday. I sent a message to my boss and put in a request for the next day. You know, Thursday. I requested it off. That same night around midnight, I got a call from my stepdad. He spoke with the hospital and, well, didn't think that she would make it. Her lungs were failing. They had to put her on a ventilator. There was also a blood clot that cut off the blood to her colon and intestines. We had to get there. 
called my brother and we drove there. I got there around 2 or 3 a.m. She couldn't open her eyes or speak, but could nod her head yes and no. She could still hear us and we got to say goodbye and how much we loved her before she lost consciousness. She passed that Friday afternoon and she didn't make it to Saturday. The second part is more like what I would consider to be a real premonition, not just a bad feeling. This is from my brother. He said I could share it. He had a dream where we were at our grandma's house. There was a bunch of brush at the end of the driveway, which is not in real life, but there was a deer out there. My grandpa, who just passed a little over a year prior, gave my brother a chainsaw to clear the brush and told him to take care of the deer. We all had to agree at the hospital to have them turn the machines off. Her intestines were deteriorating and she needed surgery, but she would never survive. She couldn't get to the surgery and she couldn't live if she didn't get the surgery. We were able to ask my mother multiple times beforehand if she wanted everything off and she vehemently nodded her head yes. It was in her living will that she didn't want a ventilator. Right after the funeral, we went to my grandma's house. At the end of the driveway was a doe. I walked out, got just ten feet from it, and got a few pictures. It wasn't afraid of me, and when I looked at it, it felt like it was my mom checking in on us. A family of ghosts might live in my house, and I'm looking for advice and just want to talk about it. So I moved about two years ago to a new city. Ever since I moved in, I felt entire rooms go cold in minutes. I felt shivers nobody else in the family has felt. I had to make all new friends, and one of them is related to an experienced medium. She's also very well versed in ghosts. I know many people don't believe in Ouija boards, and I do take them with a grain of salt. As a joke, one day I decided to mess around with one alone when I felt the shiver. I laughed off the fact I had contacted a ten-year-old girl named Manoa, called up my friend to talk about it. Mind you, I do have some strange experiences in my house, like the doors and the bathroom opening on their own, or the sink turning on by itself. So I did think there was something going on in my house. My friend recommended I try the candle mythos. You light a candle and ask yes or no questions. So I tried it in a room with no draft and closed vents. I'd ask a question, and if the answer was yes, the flame would rapidly pop up and down shake around to the point where it was coming out of the jar the candle was in, and the Manoa I had contacted was supposedly communicating with me. To make a longer story shorter, I found out there are multiple, five that I know of, ghosts in my house, all related to each other from what I've gathered. Today I thought I'd see if I could find anything on Ancestry, I found some records with exact names. Now their names are common. Nadine, Owen, Alexander, Opal, and Manoa. I kind of freaked because I thought I was nuts until I saw the names connected with info I'd previously gathered. The friend of mine told me that they might connect more with me since I do enjoy older music and movies and other media and they might find it comforting. Some people think it's bullshit, but... I honestly believe it, and I'm kind of looking for advice on how to coexist and help make the ghosts more comfortable. Another small thing before I end the post is I did do an EVP session with Manoa, and in the recording, I swear I heard her say her name. Got a few other friends to listen to it to see if they heard anything without telling them, and they heard variations like Manora or Moa, but it's generally the same as Manoa. We're hearing voices at night. Any help? 
is appreciated. Friend's dad died just after New Year. Ten days ago, he called me and asked me if he could stay with me for a while. My family refused on account of the religious restrictions, but they allowed it when I offered to stay with him, and I did. The first night, nothing happened as we talked well into the night. The second night, I woke up to my mother calling me. It took a while for my reason to sort of catch up, but I went to sleep thinking it was in my dream. But it happened again the next night. I sat up straight and waited. Nothing. I asked my friend the next morning, and he confessed that he's been sort of happening to him ever since his father died. He'd been hearing his mother calling him only to find her asleep. He told his mother about it. She dismissed it as a figment of his imagination. Fortunately, one of his cousins who was at this house last month backed him by saying that, well, she heard her husband calling her at night for the three nights he stayed. She pointed that out, that the voice seems to be coming from right outside the rooms they were sleeping in. The thing is, this sort of thing had happened to me once years ago. I woke up in the dead of the night to my father's voice calling me, only to have my father call me out from my parents' bedroom. That was when my mother warned me to not answer immediately, but to wait to be called again. Apparently, this was because the voice, in quotes, always calls when we're about half awake. Enough to act, but not enough to question. I called my family and told them about the issue, and they told me to return home pronto. But my friend had the please don't leave me look on his face, so I'm staying. I was told of precautions, but not solutions. I want to help him, but I don't know what to do. Haunted Childhood Home Growing up in my parents' home, I've always had multiple experiences with spirits. So was my entire family. Their house is an old Sears kit home built in 1932. My family moved in in 1992 or 93, can't remember exactly, I was two or three. Ever since moving in, we've had strange encounters. First one I remember is waking up in the middle of the night to go into the kitchen for a glass of water. And there was a see-through figure near the window by the stove. I tried rubbing my eyes to get adjusted in the dark, but the figure was still there, just staring out the window. I ran back to my room, hid underneath the covers till morning. After waking up, I told my mom and brother what happened, and my brother stated he saw the same thing during the night. It terrified us. Ever since that encounter, I've become infatuated with ghosts. My brother, sister, and I would sometimes sleep in my parents' bed. I would wake up during the night and I'd have a bad feeling, almost of dread. Then I would see him standing at the end of the bed watching me. He was tall, pale, had brown eyes and shaggy brown hair. I saw the same man on multiple occasions, but only in my parents' room at night. He would never say anything, just stare at me. The thing is, my mom told me years later that each of us kids told her about seeing the same man. I still wonder to this day whom he could be. My sister told us that she would also see a woman and two children on different occasions, but myself and my brother never saw them. My mom also has experiences in her bedroom, but she never sees anyone. As soon as she'll lay down to sleep, the shades will just kind of move in the room, but as soon as she sits up to see what it is, it stops. The air vent isn't on, the windows aren't cracked open. It always happens when she's alone in the bedroom trying to sleep. It still happens to this day. My mom asks my dad if it happens to him, and he denies it. That's why she can't ever sleep in her bedroom alone. Side note. My dad's a firefighter, so he used to work 24-hour shifts. Has pretty much done this over the years, working nights at other jobs, so on those nights, 
She'd sleep with one of us kids or on the couch. It scares her that much. I was home alone one day. I think I was in high school. I was sitting on my living room couch watching TV when I heard paper shuffling in her den. My mom's desk is in the den. I thought it was my cat, so I yelled for her to stop. The sound stopped for a second, but then started again as if somebody was shuffling through paperwork. I again yelled for her to stop, but it kept happening. I went into the den to see what she was doing, and she wasn't in there, which I thought was strange. I then had to use the bathroom, and as I'm about to open the bathroom door, I peer to my right, and there's my cat sleeping on my bed. I turned cold. I wouldn't have seen her walk past me if she was in the den. I went back to the den cautiously and looked around. Nothing. Still the only one home alone was a cat asleep. I sit back down on the couch again, start watching TV to get my mind off things, and, well, once again the sound starts. I decided to ask it to stop, and for some odd reason it did. I've also seen half of a man's face in the den window staring back at me, but when I turned back to my left, one was there and still freaks me out to this day. He doesn't resemble the man I saw in my parents' room, but I am unsure of who it was that I saw. The basement is also full of activity. Before the bathroom remodel, the shower curtain would try to get as close to your body as if it could, but if you asked it to stop, it would. It freaked me out for the longest time, so glad my parents finally got a shower door instead. One time I went into the basement to grab a drink from the fridge. And as I headed upstairs, I heard my brother say my name. I looked over the stairwell and asked, what? With no response and, well, no brother in sight. I run upstairs and my brother's in his room watching TV. Over the years, we've heard our name called in different areas of the home. We would turn, and, well, no one's there, and items would go missing and turn up days or months later in different spots. Someone will hear the basement door open and shut, but it's locked and, well, no one's come or gone. Items in the kitchen have fallen to the floor for no reason. There's cold spots throughout the home, especially in the basement and my den. My sister's still stu excuse me. My sister is still too scared to go to the laundry room herself because she swears there's somebody watching her in the hall to get to the laundry room. That had always been an eerie spot. It's a dark area where the furnace is and where we always keep the cat box. It just always feels as if somebody's standing behind the furnace. From what my parents have told me, the person who originally owned the house died in it. Not sure what from or what year, but there was also a deadly car crash in front of the house where the man's car went to head to the tree in front yard. I've heard stories from friends that people see a man outside my front house at night walking along the sidewalk and then disappear. They've told me those stories even before I've ever mentioned anything about my parents' house being haunted. I'm just glad that we pretty much coexisted with the ghosts over the years with some frights here and there, but... My parents are getting ready to move after being there 26 years. I'm going to be sad to see them move with all the good memories that we've had, but I do wonder if the ghosts will haunt the new owners. Part 2. Haunted Childhood Home it was early 2014, I was working nights. So on my days off, I'd be up late throughout the night. Around 2 or 3 in the morning, I'd be in the basement, chilling, watching TV or whatnot, when my cat would go crazy following something around unseen. She'd be meowing and running to different spots throughout the basement. This went on for a few nights, so one night I decided to pull my camera out, start taking pictures once my cat started freaking out. Surprisingly, I caught orbs in multiple pictures. Once I saw an orb in a picture, I decided to communicate with it, and it responded. I remember asking it, if you're really a spirit, go to the bathroom door. 
took a picture right after that, and there's an orb right on the bathroom door. Chills went straight through me. I kept communicating with the spirit for an hour or so and caught orbs throughout my basement. My cat went into my bedroom also as if seeing something, but I only caught one orb in there. I tried recording a session of me speaking with the spirit, but got no responses that way. After a few hours, my cat calmed down and all went back to normal. Even though I knew my childhood home was haunted, I truly believed this was my great-grandma paying me a visit. I'd recently at that time kept smiling her... Excuse me. That. Excuse me. Kept smelling her scent out of the blue, and on that night, I smelt her scent prior to all of this happening. Today I smelt her from time to time in my own home. I believe she just stops in to say hi and watches over me. Childhood Ghost Stories from Our Old Apartment I just saw a video on YouTube about ghost stories. Wink, wink. And it made me remember my own personal experience as a child. From five years old up until twelve years old, I used to hear and see spirits. Our old apartment was haunted and all of us siblings were used to, well, you could say, used to it growing up, but only realized it when we moved to a different house and all of the weird noises and voices and odd occurrences stopped. I remember all of us freaking out when I opened up with the conversation. Do you guys remember when doors would shut without anybody doing it? Or any wind inside the house? Do you guys remember the stairs making sounds like somebody's going up and down the stairs? That's when we all started sharing our own stories. Then we all realized that I was the only one who experienced the most. I started telling them examples after examples. I'll share three memories that I still remember vividly. A quick visit. When I was five or six, I was seated in her couch getting ready for a regular doctor visit. My mom's a nurse and takes health and wellness seriously. My mom was facing toward me, putting on my socks, and I was facing the stairs. Our stairs at our apartment were L-shaped, and it cuts off as it goes past the ceiling. It creates a shadow around the area of it, sort of cutting off past the ceiling. Sorry if I'm confusing you, it's hard to describe the layout. But as my mom was putting on my socks, I remember pointing toward our stairs. I asked her who the old man standing over there is. My mom turned around, looked at the spot I was pointing at, and she told me that there's no one there. I was confused because I could see a man standing looking down at us. His face was bloody with a bloody cloth covering half of it. He had a beard and he was staring at us. I remember not being scared but more curious. He didn't look malevolent. I kept pointing to my mom and told me to describe what he looked like. After I told her what I was seeing, my mom told me that he reminded her of her uncle who got assassinated while he was gardening at his home. That's a crazy story, but for a different topic. I'd like to hear that one. He was shot in the face and died in the hospital, which was not too long ago, but before I was born. She confirmed this story years later, and it still creeps her out whenever he talked about it. I think he was just checking up on us. Maybe he wanted to say hi. Rest in peace, Tito. It needed a rest. Years later, maybe around ten, I was alone in my room. I had a bunk bed because I shared my room with my older brother. The bunk bed was made of metal and had a mesh design underneath the mattress. My brother's spot was the bottom, and whenever he sits on his bed, the metal mesh makes a squeaky sound or rusty sound. He always drops down on his bed and never sits on it, giving it a quick squeaky sound. Or rather, he never sits on it slow. And I don't know how to exactly describe the sound, but hopefully you get it. So hearing it on a daily basis, I'm familiar with that sound. 
One day I was chilling on my desk. My CD player stopped playing after playing the whole album, and it was just dead silent. I was sketching something, so I wasn't really bothered by the silence. All of a sudden I heard my brother's bunk bed make the squeaky sound, but it was very, very slow. Like someone was pushing down or sitting down really slow. I immediately froze. I was trying to process what was happening. I started deducing in my mind. I'm alone. My brother's still in his ROTC. There's no one else in the room besides me. That's when I realized that it must be something else. I gathered my nerves, told the ghost that I'm scared of ghosts, and I hope that he, she, or it doesn't show themselves. The squeaking stopped, and I remember trembling. I decided that it was the moment. I bolted out of the room, didn't even bother glancing toward the bed. I was legit scared and was screaming as I sprinted down the stairs. I told my parents that there's a ghost in the room, and my parents told me that they don't exist. It was just my imagination. Despite telling them every detail of the story to no avail, they simply reminded me that it must have been something natural, like wood creaking or the wind or the neighbors. I'm 100% sure it was the bed. I know that creaking sound, and it was very close and not muffled, like it was beyond the walls of our room or from the outside. It was right behind me. It was coming from our bunk bed. Also, how would it make that sound if it's not for somebody or something to actually sit or lay on the bed? This memory still gives me the shivers. A gathering. My last memory of a ghost encounter was the year before we moved. I was 12 at the time, and it happened in the middle of the night. I was... Kind of an uncommon occurrence for me to wake up in the middle of the night, but this particular night was the scariest night in my life. I get a weird feeling in my stomach whenever I think about it. It's not really anything big like Hollywood-level scary, but the sheer terror that I felt left an imprint on my memory, so... Here we go. As I remember waking up in the middle of the night, for some reason, and I just stared at the ceiling, trying to go back to sleep... I was probably half awake at this point, then all of a sudden I felt like there's somebody right beside my bed, like a presence. So I'm on the top bunk of the bed, and I just felt somebody was standing beside the bed. I remember my heart started beating fast, and I immediately went fully awake, and my body just got stiff from this uneasy feeling. Mind you, it wasn't a sleep paralysis episode, because I could move and it was actually comfortable when I woke up. So I decided to gather my strength and look to my right, because I really wanted to know if there was anybody beside my bed out of curiosity. As I looked to my right, I saw four figures wearing black, like funeral formal attire, looking down on me. They were tall, because even though I was on the top bunk, they were looking down. Their faces were blurry, but they were anthropomorphic. I could tell that there were three males and one female. I stared right back at them, trying to make sense of what I was seeing, but it finally clicked in my head that they're spirits or ghosts, and I screamed and grabbed a pillow and just placed it on top of my head, and I pivoted away from them. I was crying, and, well, I was purely terrified. I started praying and praying and hoping that they won't touch me or come close. I remember repeating the Apostles' Creed and prayer for St. Michael, Hail Mary, and the Glory Be, but I was raised Catholic. The reason I quit my job at the airport. I started my new job at Will Rogers Airport. I say new job, but I was really just moved to a different airline and working in the same ramp agent position. Now I have to tell you that I have a crippling fear of heights. My least favorite part of being a ramp agent is when I have to go climb in the cargo bin in the rear loading plane because it's about 20 feet above the ground. This particular night was a strange mix of a few factors creating an uneasy feeling. The first ambience, 
It was kind of a, well, it was raining. Not just light raining, but pouring rain with a few scattered lightning flashes and random power surges. Every now and then we have dead bodies transported in the cargo bins. This was one of those occasions, and tonight was my lucky night, apparently, because my manager told me I was throwing this plane. Throwing meaning I was pulling the cargo out of the bin. It was the last plane for the night. It wasn't very much cargo beside the body. My co-worker John pulled the ramp loader to the plane and raised it up so I can walk up the conveyor belt to enter the bin. About four other co-workers came over to a baggage tug for the cargo. I say to everybody in a louder than normal tone because the rain was loudly smacking the metal shell of the airplane. Hope you all ready. I'm not trying to be in there all night. John laughed and said, don't worry about it. Maybe you can just make a new friend in there. In reference to the dead body. I didn't think it was funny, but I chuckled and told him to shut up and let's get going. I climbed into the small and cramped space and sat in the bin as far from this human-sized white cardboard box as I could. Pulled my phone out of my pocket and selected a playlist to listen to while I throw the bin. I find a good one, start working. The conveyor belt moves at a snail's pace and you have to wait until they scan each individual package so I can't throw them just as fast as I want to get out of there. About ten minutes into it, I'm getting closer and closer to this box. My music stops playing. I've had earbuds that short out when they get too wet, so the front of my mind, I'm automatically assuming that rain somehow got on, and, well, I just needed to shake a little bit of water out of them. But they were bone dry. I check Spotify to see if it was a glitch or a problem with the app, and, well, I see I have an unread text. Did I get a notification and forget in my midst of my rap-fueled baggage handling? The way my phone's set up when I get a message, it'll tell you who it is, but it won't display the message. You have to access them to read it. The message was from an unknown number, which was odd, because very few people have my number to begin with. I clicked the notification to read the message, and all it said was, Hi. I sent a text back saying, uh, hey, who's this? My phone displayed that whoever sent the message saw mine immediately after I sent it. I waited and no response. I started my playlist back up and got back to my job. Shortly after a crash of thunder that was so loud the plane shook made me jump at first, but I quickly rationalized it and returned to work. I noticed the conveyor belt was no longer moving. I yelled to John, What the hell's going on out there? Why'd it stop? John replied, Damn thing ran out of gas. We're going to have to take this load of cargo and drop it off while we get another loader over here. Sit tight. I think to myself, Where the fuck else am I going to go? About one minute later, it got cold. Like I could see my breath cold. I wrote it off as just a cold front and reach over for some stranger's luggage to lean on while I wait. As I look over for a bag to grab lighting, just went across the sky. Or maybe they meant, as I went over to grab a bag, lightning went across the sky. And I saw a quick flash of a little boy, 11, maybe 12 years old, sitting on a white box, staring at me with this eerily happy smile and his head turned slowly to the side. My heart sunk and I froze never taking my eyes off that box for what felt like hours. I was startled by the replacement conveyor belt starting up right next to the plane. I darted to the moving conveyor, crawling as fast as I could trying to keep my balance and panic at the same time. I hit the ground and looked at John and said, Nope, I'm done. You're going to have to go in there. I didn't want to explain exactly what I saw, but John knew something scared me shitless. He asked me, what's wrong? Who was it? I stuttered and walked away before I could say anything. Then I got a new text message notification that I heard loud and clear this time. A response from an unknown sender saying, it's your new friend. And from your old friend, see ya.